Receive with a hearty praise the Lord in Jesus. over us in the night hours, hallelujah, allowing us, oh God, to wake up and see another brand new day. Oh God, we give you glory, we give you praise, because you are also God, hallelujah, and you alone are so worthy to be praised, Lord. Lord God, we thank you, hallelujah, that we can come boldly to the throne of grace, hallelujah, where we can obtain mercy and grace and help in the time of need. We thank you right now, Lord, because the song says no matter what the problem is, hallelujah, nothing is too hard for you, Lord, and we bless you, Lord, hallelujah, we know that you can fix it, Lord. In fact, we know that you're working it out right now, Lord, hallelujah, we know, God, that you're moving in our direction, hallelujah, oh, God, we know that those who pray, those that believe, those that look to you, Lord, they can't expect a miracle, Lord. Where else are we going to go, Lord? We have nowhere else to go, hallelujah. But, oh, my God, you have the answer to every situation. 
situation, Lord. Oh, God, we thank you right now, Lord. We pray, God, that you will take us down in the treasures of your holy word on this morning. Anoint your mouthpiece this morning, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We pray, God, hallelujah, that you will look on the sick and the shut-in, Lord. We pray, God, that you will look upon those that are burdened, Lord, those that have just given up hope, Lord. But in you, Lord God, there is always a way to be better. Hallelujah. And we give you praise right now, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, oh God, for what you're doing, Lord. And we give you praise and we give you glory because the enemy is under our feet right now. Hallelujah. And we thank you, oh God. Hallelujah. For the power and the authority of the Holy Ghost that is moving right now, Lord. Bless your people, Lord. Bless this nation, Lord. Look on this world situation, God, because only you have the answer, God. Only you have the answer, Lord. And we look unto thee, Lord. We're looking unto you, God. And we want to tell you thank you right now because we know, Lord, that there is no failure in you. And God, we give you praise. We give you glory. We thank you for healing, setting free, and delivering right now. Through the power of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, we thank you for it, and we say amen and amen. fixer. He's a mind regulator. He's the bridge over troubled water. He's a shelter in the time of a storm. Uh, let Jesus fix it for you. Glory to God. We want to thank God for that beautiful prayer. Glory be to God. The Bible said men ought to always pray and not to faint. There's a song I like that says seven days without prayer makes one weak. Ah, right. Glory Amen. to God. You need prayer. Ah, like the flower needs the rain, you need prayer. You need to be connected to the source, yeah. uh, the life source. He's the giver and sustainer of life. Yeah. You got to stay connected to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. At this time, we're going to ask the sound of Pentecost to take us further in worship as they come and render selections in Jesus' name. And the next speaking voice you will hear, that would be of our pastor, Apostle Raymond J. Keefe, Jr. Let's greet them in that order in Jesus' name.
be long. All right. <laughs> uh, I want to thank our music department. Praise God. Amen. Every Sunday, they bless us. Amen. And I'm excited to be here with you today. Praise God. This is friends and family. Glory to God. And we're glad to have all our friends and all our family. Praise God. And it might be that our families are the hardest folk to deal with. But I'm glad for friends and family. Lord, help us. Praise God. And I bless God for um, today for what he's doing. Um, today is the culmination of an exciting week. It's been an exciting month. Glory to God. God has been good to us. Praise God. And we had on yesterday, we had a uh, block party. Amen. We just blocked off the streets. And, amen. Just enjoy Jesus. Praise God. Had a lot of fun. Amen. And for the first time that I can remember, I slept through most of it. I'm getting old, y'all. Lord, help us. Praise God. But God has been good. Praise God. And then on the 27th of this month, we celebrated my lady. Amen. I didn't sleep through that. Lord help us. Praise God. Three weeks of revival and we've just, I'm on fire. Praise God. And I bless this great God that we serve. I want to take you today um, to 1 Samuel, the 23rd, I'm sorry, the 30th chapter. And I want to read just a couple of verses and then I will backtrack. I want to start at verse number 6. And the Bible says, and David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And David said to Abathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, Bring me hither the ephah. And Abathar brought thither the ephah to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, pursue. Just smile at your neighbor and say, pursue. For thou shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. Yeah, I want to talk for a little while to all the doubting Thomases. 
I want to say, I feel you. Praise God. And I want to talk from the subject, will I ever recover? Yeah. Smile at your neighbor and ask them, say neighbor. neighbor. Will, I will I ever recover? <laughs> will I ever? And I know the way I'm supposed to preach this, it is pursue because you shall recover. And everybody's going to say, hey, man. But that's not where we are a lot of times. A lot of times after we have danced, after we have shouted, after we have testified, when we leave out, we wonder. I see Betty doing good. Billy seems to really be making it. I've been praying hard. But Kenzie, will I ever recover? And the enemy uses that to work on us in our cars in our quiet times, in our working hours, when we try to lose ourselves and feel successful, there seems to be a nagging right in the back of our mind. Will I ever recover? We try to encourage ourselves. We come together and worship. And in our worship, we have, and we are still old school, we have um, testimony service. Praise God. Folk get up and talk about how good God has been. And sometimes that discourages us. That's right. <laughs> because we hear they doing good. They are being successful. Look at that, how God worked for them. And we look at our circumstance. And it's been a year. And it's been two years been five years and with all the jumping and shouting we've done we still don't feel like we're where we used to be or where we want to be and that can be discouraging and if you're not careful Folk will speak into your spirit. Doubt. Unbelief. Discouragement. Praise God. Almost makes you feel like everybody else might succeed. But will I ever recover. This story about David blesses me. And it blesses me because it shows something about who David was and why the Lord selected him. Praise God. Because 
as I read to you. <laughs> and David was greatly distressed. Praise God. We don't normally talk about that concerning David. When we talk about David, we talk about how great a king he was. We talk about how, praise God, successful he was. How? Through overwhelming odds, he slayed Goliath. Cut off his head with his own sword. <laughs> Praise God. And how? David went in and out. And behaved himself. Wisely. Amen. Woo! Amen. Hallelujah! But that wasn't where David started. And David had a lot of ups and downs. Praise God. And his one of his very difficult downs came after he slayed Goliath. Why? The Bible says, after David slayed Goliath, the saints got together, started playing their tambourines, singing and dancing, shouting, talk about, in a song, David slayed his 10,000. Saul only slayed a thousand. And the Bible say Saul got mad. Yeah. <laughs> but Saul, you ought to have been rejoicing. Yeah. Your greatest enemy was slain. Praise God. Your army was entrenched, trapped, and having heart issues for 40 days until David showed up. <laughs> and when David showed up, he showed up with a zeal that wasn't in any of the rest of the army. Praise God. He was little in stature. Praise God. He didn't have armor or weapons, but he had a boldness about him Praise God that shocked the rest of the army. David wanted to know who is this uncircumcised Philistine. My God, how long has he been talking like this? And y'all didn't do nothing. My God, I wish y'all would let me go down there. And folk heard it. They went to the king and said, King, there's a guy over there talking a bunch of smack. And he said, he'll go down there and fight Goliath. Saul said, bring him here. <laughs> and then when he saw David, <laughs> praise God, everything changed. <laughs> David, David, buddy, you can't fight him. You don't even fight. And this guy has been fighting since he was a kid. You, there is no way you can go up against him. Praise God. I'm thinking the Saul is thinking, what am I going to do? How can I get rid of this guy so I can find somebody that's really going to fight? And David said, well, you know, it's funny that you think that about me because... I think a lion and a bear had the same thought. <laughs> Praise God. And they thought they could just run in and grab some sheep out of my daddy's flock. And I just didn't believe my daddy was going to have that. So I had to deal with the lion 
And I had to deal with the bear. Praise God. And I see this uncircumcised Philistine the exact same way. <laughs> Praise God. I'm going to go in and I'm going to take his head and I'm going, oh God, what am I going to do with this guy? <laughs> Praise God. All right. Well, you don't have no armor. Stand over here. Let me put mine on you because I need you at least protected before you get killed. Here's my sword, praise God, and here's my helmet. <laughs> and David said, this, this, this stuff don't fit me and you are a different size. <laughs> did did y'all know the Saul was kind of tall and kind of, you know, buff? And David was kind of small. <laughs> praise God. So his outfit wouldn't fit. And a lot of times... When we are in the house of God, we look around and see folk that we admire, but their outfits won't fit. Praise God. So don't judge yourself based on other saints. Because God has a way just for you. Uh, David slew Goliath, cut his head off, praise God, brought it to the king, and the king saw it, and the Bible says immediately after that, that David behaved himself wisely, praise God. And the king, praise God, thought in his mind, this guy, praise God, will win the hearts of the people, because they're already singing that he slayed his ten thousand. And I only slayed a thousand. So he started plotting against him. Praise God. And I don't know how many times. I think he threw a javelin trying to kill David at least three times. But now that's a lot of javelin throwing. If they were in our time. Praise God. That would have meant that he had a Glock 9. And went after him three different times. Praise God. And the only thing Saul is trying to figure out is, how did I miss him? Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. Praise God. I, that, you know. And the only reason why he missed him was because God was on his side. Praise God. And so finally, David, what he said was, I, I, if I don't get away from this guy, praise God, I'm going to die. And so he left there, and if I had the time, I would take you to uh, 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 1 Samuel 22, praise God, because it talks about how David went to the king of Gath, praise God. And Gath, for those of you that don't know, is in Philistria. In other words, he went to the enemy, praise God, to find some peace. And it is too often that the saints of God, praise God, they feel wounded in the house of God. Praise God. And then they go to the enemy's camp to find peace. Boy, that's bad. That's bad. Praise God. And the funny thing about David was when he showed up, at the enemy camp, they were talking the same thing in the enemy camp that they had been talking in Israel. Is not this David king? Praise God. This is the guy that they sung about. David killed his 10,000 and Saul only killed a thousand. And it was at that point that David realized I might be in trouble. And so, instead of looking for a warm invitation, David started acting crazy. <laughs> Praise God. He started taking drugs and stealing. Praise God. And lying. And, oh, y'all ain't hearing me. You say, that ain't in the Bible. No, that's just an equivalent. Uh, what David did was start spitting on himself and, and scratching on the door and just acting crazy. And the king said, man, I'm not letting that guy in my house. 
Praise God. And the Bible says David escaped to the cave in Adullam. A getaway from the enemy's camp was a hole in the ground. Praise God. And the Bible says that just like in the church when you find folk who are kind of not sure what they going to do, folk gravitate to them. <laughs> and everybody that was in debt, and everybody that was in distress, praise God, and everybody that had a problem, they sought to David. Praise God, because misery Oh, I wish I could preach in here. Praise God. Which is why, amen, I like to celebrate with everybody. But I don't want to hang out with everybody. Praise God. Because some of the folk that want you to hang out with them don't have a good vision of God. They look at their circumstance. Praise God. And that seems to be where they are. Praise God. And I don't look at my circumstance and live there. Glory to God. Because sometimes my circumstances are so bad, they scare me. Oh, y'all ain't going to help me. Praise God. So I don't like to stay in those scary situations. I know this is All Hallows Eve. But I don't like to be scared like that. Lord help us. So here we are. Praise God. We find David. Praise God. He has gone into the hole. All of these folk have come to join with him. And I don't know how David did it. I'm still trying to work on this. He pulled all of those desperate different folk together. And made a team. And they followed him. And they followed him, praise God, into the enemy's camp. And in the enemy's camp, praise God, he had to um, steal away and, 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 and rob and, and, and kill, praise God, just to stay safe in the enemy's camp. Praise God and praise God. It came to a time, praise God, and just like for David, it's going to be for each and every one of us. You must make a choice. Praise God. Philistria decided we're going to war. Praise God. We're going to war with Israel. And because David was in the enemy's camp, praise God, he had to line up with the enemy to go to war with Israel. Praise God. But the princes in Philistia said this guy is not going to war with us. Praise God. And his master wanted to know why, man. All the time he's been with me, he's been nothing but a help. Yeah, but the easiest way for David to get back good with Israel is turn on us in the battle. Praise God. And they said, you know, just make your peace. Send him home. He's not coming with us. Praise God. And David got up early in the morning, him and his compadres, and they traveled three days to get home. And when they got home, they found out three days ago, your camp was invaded. Three days ago, your wives and your children were taken captive. Praise God. What's the significance, Pastor? The significance is, and I hope you get the lesson, when God loves you, he forces you to deal with things about you. <laughs> Glory to God. Now, David had no idea he was going to have to deal with him. 
Praise God. He thought, you know, I'm feeling a little bad. They should have let me fight. Praise God. But since they won't let me fight, I will go home and enjoy my family. Praise God. Only to find out while I was out trying to make a name. My family was devastated. And I wasn't there. Praise God. And all of you who are trying to be saved. But still living in the world. Praise God. You're drinking. You're drugging. You're lying. You're stealing. You're doing whatever you're doing. Don't be mad at me. I'm just talking. All of that stuff you're going to have to deal with. Because you are affecting your family. <laughs> don't tell me how to raise my family that's part of the problem you don't want to hear what it takes to be right praise God when we you know when we start talking you must repent of all of your sins you must be filled with the Holy Ghost you must be baptized in Jesus oh there you go nowhere else to go that's what you need. You just don't want to hear it. Praise God. But you're going to keep doing what you're doing. Until you decide you want to get right. And then when you start trying to get right. All hell is going to break loose. Praise God. And all hell is going to break loose because the devil have done something to you that you didn't realize. Praise God. He infected you with your past. <laughs> and every time you feel like you're getting successful, he's going to remind you who you are and where you came from. Praise God. And sometimes while you're in the worship, shouting and praising God, dropping your head, you stop your praise and sit down. And the folk that's sitting next to you are wondering, they wondering, you know, they was just dancing. I mean, what? What? Well, wait, I ain't going to say nothing. We just going to, you know, play like ain't nothing happened. But that's what goes on in our mind. Praise God. And believe it or not, amen, you wonder, will I ever get over this? Praise God. We continually repent for the same sins that the Lord has forgiven us for. Because we feel guilty because we did it. And that was just a part of the devil's program. Praise God. Once he got you, he doesn't want to let you go. It's a battle. Praise God. And the Bible says, amen, that David was distressed. And the reason he was distressed was because the folk who was backing him, pushing him to lead. And he led them. Praise God to a place where they felt like they were getting victory. Now to come back home and find their families torn up. They didn't want to accept any responsibility that it's maybe my fault. That I wasn't paying attention. Praise God. It's David's fault because he led us. Fool with these Philistines. David was distressed, greatly distressed, because they spoke of stoning him. Praise God. And I bless God. And I, I know y'all are kind of getting a little bored, so let me wrap this up. Amen. David did something that is unusual. David acted like God. <laughs> he didn't pay attention to what people were thinking or feeling. The Bible says that he went to Abathar, 
who was the only priest. He was the son of Ahimelech, praise God, who was the chief priest and Saul had killed. Praise God. Killed his whole family. Wiped out 85 priests. And Abathar was the only one that got away. David did not trust Abathar to pray this prayer. David said to Abathar, give me the ephah. <laughs> Glory to God. And he wrapped himself in the ephah and talked to God. Glory to God. I can imagine what David was thinking. Praise God. Lord, I spent all that time trying uh, to ingratiate myself to the enemy, make myself look good, feel better. And here my family was in trouble. Praise God. And here you forced them to make me come back and find my family in trouble. Praise God. And these guys that was hanging with me are talking about killing me. Should I go after my family? Now, in most of our minds, it should have been straight. Shouldn't have been even a question. What do they call A no-brainer? <laughs> Praise God. We supposed to go after the family or die trying. Glory to God. But David wanted to know, shall I go? Praise God. Shall I pursue? And will I recover? Glory to God. And too many of us have a doubting Thomas spirit. And even though God has been good to us, just like Israel, we still struggle. Praise God. Am I good enough to be blessed? Glory to God. Well, the answer to that is no. <laughs> uh, you ain't want to hear that. But that's the answer. No, you weren't good enough. Glory to God. But in spite of that, the Lord makes a way. Glory to God. What a mighty God we serve. Glory to God. With all that David had done. With all that David had been through. Glory to God. God told David. Praise God. Pursue. And without fail. You're going to recover all. Oh my God. Pray if I could hear that today. Glory to God. If I could hear that from God, my God, I'd be on cloud nine. Glory to God. Why, Pastor? Because there are some mistakes that I was just stupid to make. Glory to God. And those mistakes cost me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And if we could change the circumstances, praise God. My lady is a jewel. Amen. And she just been so super, super, super duper. Praise God. There's only one mistake that I knew she made. You want to know what that is, Brother Bobby? Yeah, you do. When I was a kid, praise God, I was a um, comic book aficionado. And I had all the books, which would have made us billionaires. Praise God. But to her, that was just trash. And I came home one day like Red Fox. You did what? <laughs> if we if if we could have just had half of those, pray I wouldn't need tithes and offering. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. I, praise God, I wouldn't need that little car that y'all brothers had to push while I was trying to remember that. <laughs> 
because I would have had the money to buy what I needed to buy. That was a costly mistake. And I still feel bad. <laughs> Things that happen we don't really feel like we can get over and forget. But here's David, praise God, in this bind. And God is telling him, go. And without fail, you're going to recover. And so they start out. And guess what they got? They found this guy in the bushes who was just about dead. And they fed him back to life. And he said, three days ago, while you were trying to get in to fight those other folk, <laughs> my master dropped me here and didn't care nothing about me. And here three days later, you came and found me and I know exactly where he is. And if you promise not to kill me or turn me over to him, I can take you to him. <laughs> Woo! That's one of those, we don't have to wait till the battle is over. <laughs> Praise God. And they was booking it too. You know, they was like in a cowboy movie. Praise God. They was riding on their horses. And they was just running till they got to the brook. And some of them were so tired. They said, man, we can't, we can't go no further. David said, well, you watch our stuff. And the rest of us is going to go on. Praise God. And the Bible says, not only did they catch up to them. But they were able to surround and maneuver and they killed, praise God, um, all of them except for 400 who got away on their camels. Praise God. But all the rest of the stuff, all of the sheep and all of the uh, goats and all of the valuable stuff was left for David and his crew. Glory to God. And here they come back with all of this stuff. Praise God. And get to the crew that's watching the little stuff that they had. And some of the fellas said, man, you didn't go with us, so you don't get to share in none of this. Praise God. Because that's the way we do when God is not a part of our program and it's not enough that you run with the saints because they was running with David and David was going by inspiration of God but their hearts and minds weren't changed so it's not enough to be in an assembly where the Holy Ghost is poured out you got to have it or your mind is not going to be right Oh, I wish I could preach up in here. See, our problem is we don't really like the word unless it's entertaining to us. Praise God. But I heard Brother Robinson say, have I become your enemy? Because I tell you the truth. Praise God. Unless you receive the Holy Ghost, you're wasting your time. And you're going to get a few ups there. You know, that's going to be nice. But you are not going to recover until your life changes. Come on, turn up those shots. Oh, I know, I know. You can get a good job. You can make some money. You can buy a nice car. But that doesn't mean you've recovered. Oh, glory to God. Oh, I'm going to preach here after a while. See, recovery is more than stuff. Oh, God. Recovery is when you can lay down and sleep and not worry. Oh, God. Why are you not worried? Because all night 
and all day I got angels they watching over me I don't have to sit up and worry I know in whom I believe and I'm persuaded that he's able to keep I know it I know it because there's something down inside of me that keeps telling me I got you <laughs> uh, you know I'm thinking about jumping off this I know you are but I got you glory to God and I'm not gonna let you go out like that because I chose you way back before there was a when or a where I chose you before there was a then or a there I chose you to bless you and I'm not going to let no devil destroy you uh, hallelujah glory to God so David was able to pin later in life yea though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death I'm not afraid I don't fear no evil because thou art with me glory to God I don't need a Uzi glory to God I don't need bodyguards I got Jesus uh, see and for some folk that don't mean nothing oh God hallelujah Amen, but that's your problem. Amen, but I know who has me. Glory to God. So I can rejoice. I can praise God when it looks like I'm falling apart. I got to praise and I got to get it out. And you think I've lost my mind, but I'm not crazy. I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled. Uh, will I ever recover glory to God and so many of us praise God we spend a lot of our time trying to get stuff glory to God hallelujah and uh, amen the stuff might come but there's no satisfaction down on the inside glory to God and when you are doing what God will have you to do glory to God those even closest to you might turn on you glory to God don't charge it to their heart it's just their head they're trying to think their logical way through glory to God but logic won't keep you I know it makes sense, praise God, to duck under there. Glory to God, but something said, stand right here and see the salvation of the Lord. Glory to God. I'm about to try to close here. Praise God. But I remember this commercial around this time. Praise God. The young people, praise God, who were kind of ducking and dodging. And they were behind some hanging chainsaws. Praise God. And there was a car running. Amen. That they could get in and drive away. Praise God. But one of them said, no, let's not go there. Praise God. Let's go high. Hide, praise God behind the chains so y'all ain't hearing me glory to God and even the guy who was going to kill him had a struggle he's trying to figure are they really that stupid well he just adjusted his mask got his little chains and go to following why because sometimes we can be so stupid that we walk right in to the devil's trap glory to God and we get there because we are mad at the Saints and uh, it's been a long time and we didn't get any deliverance 
Glory. It's been a long time and we are still struggling. Uh, it's been a long time and they promised me if I got saved that everything would be all right. Glory to God. Well, there are some caveats in that argument. Uh, what are the caveats, Pastor? The race is not to the swift. Neither is the battle to the strong. Uh, glory to God. But you've got to be willing to go all the way. Glory to God. See, I knew y'all wasn't going to stay with me there. Glory to God. Because I, it, it blows my mind. I see old folk, praise God, who were on fire for the Lord. Praise God. Now that they've gotten all, gotten kind of worldly. And feel like, well, I've been in this thing like this. And now I want to look like everybody else. And their dresses get short. And, and their makeup gets full. And, and their jewelry starts. Hey, Y'all helping me glory to God and we get so caught up in how we look we forgot what we're looking for huh? glory to God and if you think you're going to find a husband like that huh? you're not going to find a husband you're going to find a man huh? and what that man is going to do is use what he can huh? and when he can't use you huh? he'll go looking for somebody else huh? y'all ain't going to help me huh? but when you find what God has for you even if it got a punch belly and a bald head you can count on him cause he'll be right there or oh, y'all ain't gonna help me I know you wanna show him off to your girlfriends and tell how good looking he is and how broad his shoulders are and all of that kind of stuff but wouldn't it be better if he didn't have all of that but in the midnight hours he'll put his arms around you and let you know everything is gonna be all right I know I might not have all the money you think uh -huh. and I might not ride the kind of ride that you want me to have but when you need to go to the store I can drive you there and bring you back and when you pick out your stuff I can pay the bill y'all ain't gonna help me and if I don't have what I need to have I'll keep on working till I got what I need y'all ain't gonna say nothing we get so hung up in how they look that we wanna buy them something to look better but I come to tell you if you got to buy him and he ain't buying you it's the wrong thing will you ever recover y'all ain't gonna help me see recovery comes to when you're together and it doesn't matter how much rain is coming how deep the storm as long as we're together everything hey God is gonna be all right I know you think I'm talking about that man but I come to tell you there's somebody that sticks closer I wish I could preach here hallelujah he lets us know after all that you've been through through all the ups through all the downs to all the jerking all around I'm here and I'll help you you don't have to worry you don't have to fret I'm here and I'll bless you whatever Whatever you don't have, whatever you need, if your ways please me, oh yeah, I'll, I'll make your enemies, oh God, your footstool, oh, the joy that came to me when I knew that I was 
was free no longer bound the devil is no longer calling the shots there was a time that you get so frustrated you feel justified when you walk out to do wrong but now that you're anchored oh instead of walking out you fall on your knee father i stretch my hand to thee no other no other help that woman that man that money is not gonna satisfy there's a hole in my heart and nothing but an anointing is gonna plug that hole i need i need i need the oh i need the yeah every hour i need thee oh bless me now my savior i come oh yeah i come i come to thee i've been hurt i've been crushed i've been used i don't know where else to go lord is there any bomb in gilead is there any healing for my sin sick soul i heard the lord say it'll be all right oh whatever you are dealing with it'll be all right and when i take you through this life i got another life with your name on it oh i got an anointing and a house not made with hands i got a blessing in the other place there's a land of pure delight but it's over there where is day and never night but it's over there in order to get there you gotta be holy when they talk about you you gotta be holy you gotta hold your peace and let me fight your battle oh, when they lie on you you gotta be good to them hey lord we don't roll like that if you want to be with me you gotta trust me i'll get you in and i'll get you out so wait on the lord i heard the writer say has thou not known has thou not heard that the lord the everlasting father the creator of the ends of the earth he does not faint and he doesn't get weary oh he gives power to the weak to them that have no might he increases their strength the youth shall faint and be weary the young man shall utterly fall but they cannot preach here tell your neighbor they that wait on the Lord shall you got to say it like you mean it shall renew your strength mount up on wings like an eagle run not be weary walk and not fade wait oh tell somebody wait i know it's been a while but wait deliverance is on the way shall i recover the answer is yes tell somebody yes he loves me yeah he loves me yes he loves me because the bible it tells me so and i tell you stand to your feet forget about what they said and give god the glory because he's been 
because he's been because he's been so good so so good it's been a long time but I gotta praise it's been a while but I gotta praise I gotta feel it every everything is gonna be all right all right all right just tell somebody hold on it's gonna be all right oh oh it's gonna it's gonna it's it's gonna be it's gonna be all right that situation you in you shall recover if God is on your side greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world if God is on your side you already won come on let's lift those hands let's open our mouths let's just give him the praise that he deserves let's just by time out, let's just bless him i know you're going through i know you're struggling but you're gonna come out satan can't hold you he ain't strong enough he don't have enough power how you know because he's already been knocked out i beheld him as he fell from heaven like lightning glory to god and he fell down here so we can dance on his head and give god the praise but you gotta have the holy ghost tell your neighbor you gotta have the holy ghost church membership is not enough you need the holy ghost uh, oh yeah uh, uh, yeah oh uh, yeah uh, only ghost that don't scare me is the holy ghost uh, yeah I'll take him with me into a dark closet into a spooky house into a battle i'll take the holy ghost because i know he's a shield all around me i know underneath are the everlasting arms and he'll hold me just crap your hands around yourself i heard brother david when he said i'll encourage myself in the lord they ain't with me no more but god is still on my side come on wrap those hands and remember he's still on your side he's still in your heart he's still got a blessing with your name on it you might as well grab it because he wants to bless you your heads are tired of my shiatara. Uh, your heads are bowed. Hey! Hotama! Hey, God, oh God. I love him, I love him, I love him, I love him. Hey! Before we ask for anything, is there anybody here that loves him in spite of what you're dealing with? Is there anybody here that loves him in spite of what you're going through? Is there anybody here that loves him? Let him know, Lord, no matter what, I love you. 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 Hey, God. Uh, 
and I believe uh, he's going to break some holes. Uh, I believe uh, he's going to give some victory. If he sends some praises up, uh, some blessings uh, will start to come down. Uh, you ought to uh, feel uh, a breakthrough. Uh, not because I told you, uh, but because uh, he's on your side. Uh, you ought to feel uh, some deliverance uh, because you saw uh, you told uh, You're going to recover. You're going to recover. You're going to recover. You say you want the Holy Ghost. Do you want it? Stand up. Don't be afraid. See, that's the devil's trick. He likes to get us so trembling. Praise God. I don't know what God's going to do. Whatever he does, our time is a blessing. Because I know what it was like when I was with the devil. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. I was struggling every day. My God. I don't know if you came for the Holy Ghost or not. But I know you need it. Come on and walk with her. Walk with me. Glory to God. Come on, we're walking this way. Oh, bless his great name. See, when God is on your side, the Holy Ghost is like a paraclete. It comes up alongside and it locks on. Glory to God. And I know you might not be ready to let everything go. But trust him and let him walk on you. Drop everything. Everything that you can. And praise him. And while you praise him, he'll walk on the rest of the stuff. Hurry away in the name of Jesus. Something about the Holy Ghost. I can't explain. I said I can't explain. But I know I got it. I know it's down on the inside. I know deliverance is at the door. Come on, ask yourself, will I ever... Recover. Come on, ask your neighbor. Will I ever recover? Oh yeah. The Lord's been working on you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, I am Raymond Keith. I'm the pastor of Refuge in Kentucky. Uh, my joy to come into your hearts, to your homes, your computer, your phones, uh, by this medium. And I just wanted to talk with you about salvation and because this world has so denigrated the Lord and the plan of salvation you might be wondering is this thing real I can only talk to you from my experience and in my experience this thing is real I was a young man running the streets in Harlem, New York, and my parents were saved, and I didn't believe. You know, I heard about it, went to church, but wasn't committed. Had some experiences in my youth, one of which scared me so that I went to the church, got on my knees, and I prayed because I didn't want to go to a devil's hell. Sam Cooke, y'all don't remember him, but he was a, a singer and he said, it's true hard living. He said, but I'm afraid to die because I don't know what's up there, out there, beyond the sky. My belief, according to the word of God, Beyond the sky is a paradise, a kingdom ruled by Jesus Christ. And I want to go there. I want to invite you to go there. Well, in order to get there, according to what the word of God says, you must repent 
of your sins. Well, what does that mean? That means we have to come to a place where we are godly sorry for what we've done. We realize that what we've done was wrong. When we were doing it, we might have thought it was wrong. We might have thought it was right. But now we realize it was wrong. And we want to be right. When you repent, something happens on the inside. And you pray. And in your prayer, you talk honestly to God. Lord, I, I'm a sinner. I realize it. And I want to change my life. And in so doing, you will gain an experience that you hadn't gained before. Bible says if you repent, baptized in his name, you shall receive the gift. And it is a gift. You don't earn it. You can't buy it. It's a gift. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And you know that it's on the inside. Your conversation will be different. You'll speak in a language that you didn't know. You will gain power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you will learn to live holy. It's a process. It's a journey. And if you trust God, he'll take you through that journey. Some through the fire. Some through the flood. Some through great trials. But all through the blood. Thank you for allowing me to come into your hearts and into your homes. If we can assist you, my name is Raymond Keith. I minister here at Refuge in Kentucky Church. We're located 1716 Prentice Street ah, in beautiful downtown Louisville. Louisville, Kentucky, 40210. Our phone number is 502. It is uh, um, 963 5388. Somebody's there, and if not, you leave a message, somebody will get back to you. We love you. Yesterday, he blessed us. Today, we praise his name because we know tomorrow he'll bless us just the same. Go with God, and God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Um, I am Raymond.